Hey there, Rodrigo here for Textualize and in this short video I want to show you how you can manipulate screens dynamically with the appropriate application methods. So I have a I have an app in front of me, sorry, I have an app in front of me, it's over here. It has a label that says that we are at the base screen and it has a couple of buttons that say push A and push B. And I have a custom screen here, so I have a class screen A that inherits from screen. And this screen also has a label and a couple of button, uh, buttons. So the label identifies the screen and the buttons say push A, push B and pop. And what I'll do now is I'll create a second screen that's just like screen A, but I'm going to call it screen B because I don't have a lot of imagination. And otherwise it's going to look exactly the same. Now what I want to show you is how you can use these buttons, push A and push B, to push the screens A and B onto the stack. So what we'll do is we'll use the class variable screens, all uppercase, and in here we will create a name for each of the screens. So we will map the lowercase a to the screen a and we will map lowercase b to the screen b and now what we'll do is we will create event handlers so that whenever a button is pushed um, sorry whenever a button is pressed we do the appropriate action with the screens and so if push a is pressed we're going to push the screen a on the stack and we'll see what that means when the button b is pressed we will push the screen b on the stack and when the button pop is pressed, we will pop a screen from the stack. So let's see, do I have, yes, so I have the on decorator here. So inside my application, I'm going to create a handler for button.pressed. And in particular, I want to listen for presses on buttons A and B with IDs A and B. And if that's the case, if that's the case, push screen. And the event here is going to be a button pressed event. So in this case, what I want to do is I want to use the method, the app method, push screen. Uh, so this is going to be a problem. So let's see. Add screen to stack. So self dot push screen. Yeah, exactly. So push screen. And now this method that wants to push a screen to the stack it accepts either a screen or a name of a screen that we defined here. And so what I can do is I want to do, well, the screen I want to push will depend on the ID of the button. So I'll just take a look at the event. I'll take a look at the button and the ID of the button. I'm going to push the screen whose name matches the ID of the button. And when I'm done, I'm going to print self.screenStack. For you to, I want you to see what this is. So now what I need is a second window. I'm going to connect the console here. Yes, and now I'm going to run my application. Dash will run, dash dash dev, my app.py. So this is the base screen. Let me create some space there. Now I'm going to press the button push A. And now this says this is screen A. And in here in the console, where is it? Button A was pressed, where the, yes, so it's over here. So I pressed the button and then I printed, I printed the screen stack. And what I see is this screen with the ID underscore default and then screen A. So this screen stack is literally a screen stack. It's just the stack that contains all of the screens on your, on your application right now. And you can use push screen to push new screens on top of the stack. And the screen on top of the stack is the one that's visible. And so if I press B and then B and then B and then B and then A, I am again at the screen A, so this is screen A. But if I go to the console, if I scroll down, I see over here that the screen stack contains the default screen, screen A, then the four screen B that I pushed, and then screen A. And if I pop, if I press the button pop, I want to pop from that stack. So I will be removing the screen at the top of the stack and I will be resuming the one that was immediately under it. So in order to do that, I'm going to create another handler method, so button.pressed. But this time I want to run when I'm pressing the pop button and then pop screen from stack self event is again a button pressed. And in this case, what I want to do is self pot, uh, self dot pop screen. 
I don't need to give any arguments and after I'm done I'll just print the screen stack again. So I'll connect my application. I will press B a bunch of times and then A. Notice that the label says this is screen A and the list, the stack here, where is it? Where is the stack? It's over here. So there's a bunch of B's and then an A. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to press pop. And so if I scroll down, I see the stack over here. The stack no longer contains the A at the end and the label here says this is screen B. And I can pop all the way back to the base screen. So I'm pressing pop a bunch of times and then it says this is the base screen. Now, there's one other thing you can do with screen. So instead of pushing and popping, so changing the depth of the stack, what you can do is you can switch screens. So a call to the method switch screen will switch the screen that's on top of the stack. So let's do something like this. So when the application is mounted, suppose that instead of wanting to run on the default screen, what we want to do is switch immediately the screen to screen A, for example. So now when I run the application, it will say, oops, what did I do? Ah, interesting, this doesn't work. Okay. Okay, so this was, I thought I was going to show you something in a given order, but I have to swap it around. So what I want to do is, let's start with this. Let's add a pop button to the base screen. So let's do pop, id equals pop. Now if I run my application, this should work, yeah. So I'm at the base screen, and if I try to pop the base screen, it complains, because I'm, I tried to empty the screen stack and I cannot do that, because I always need a screen, some screen, and the default one, it's, it's at the bottom, I can't get rid of it, because at this point I have no other screens on the stack. And so, this shows why I couldn't, well it doesn't, but it helps understand why I couldn't switch the screen right at the beginning because I can't get rid of the default screen, so I always need it at the bottom. But what I can do is, I'm inside screen A, and I'm going to add a switch button, switch to B, ID equals switch, and now in my application I'm going to create a final event handler that runs when the button with the ID switched is pressed, and I'm going to say switch to B self event. And now what I'm going to call is the function, the method switch screen. And I'm going to switch to the screen with the ID B and I'm going to print the stack. In stack. All right, so now if I go ahead and if I run my application, I'm going to pop, sorry, I'm going to press and push a screen A to the stack, which should be over here, let's see. It's over here, so the screen A is at the top of the stack, and now if I press switch to B, what did I do wrong? It's not switching, it still says this is screen A. Let's see what I'm doing wrong. Something silly for sure. So switch, it's not switched, it's switch. Sorry about that, the ID was wrong very quickly, so we push A, a is at the top of the stack and now we switch to B and now it says this is screen B and the screen stack, where is it? The screen stack shows that screen A is no longer on the stack. So if you want to replace a screen, you're going to use the method switch screen. So I hope this was understandable. Turns out this wasn't such a short video uh, after all. It's, well, it's just three ideas, it's three methods, but I just had to show you um, how they change the stack, and so we've been here for nine minutes now. I'll leave documentation links below, and if you have any questions, feel free to join the Discord server and, and ask them there, because everyone is very willing to help. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye.